pleasant afternoon uh, to everybody. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you all for being here, here despite the re uh, uh, alert on COVID. Um, uh, this book, as uh, Mamsel had already told uh, before you, uh, that this book is actually a first in many ways. So it is first uh, for PIDS because this is the first gender book. And this is also the first for me because this is the very first book project that I've ever handled. And the experience is very enriching and it's very challenging. So I ended up writing more than I intended <laughs> and I ended up, you know, uh, rereading and rereading things so that you, you, I can come up with something that is that would tie up everything together. You know, some some, some unifying theme and uh, that that would put everything together in perspective. Okay, so as I was saying, no, um, we were able to come up with um, the overarching theme of work and education. So why work? Uh, why education? Uh, education, we don't have problems when it comes to women. Uh, it is the boys that have problems. Uh, boys have high dropout rates, they have uh, lower enrollment uh, at all levels, and they have lower test scores. Uh, but in terms of work, uh, the problem here is that even though women have already uh, attained a lot in terms of education, it does not get translated into the into their labor market participation so if we take a look at the women's labor force participation no from nine, nine, 1990 it's around 48 percent and in, in 2018 it's around 51 percent and so you will see that there's just like three to four percentage points increase in the span of three decades so that's really really small uh, and and you, 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 will, you get to think what happens to their education. It doesn't get translated into their labor market participation. So where are they? So uh, just like uh, Congressman Salceda said earlier, it has something to do with them uh, being, in the, uh, being uh, in, the house, uh, in the household, doing housework. I'm not saying, we are not saying here that doing housework is, not, is bad at all or it's bad, completely bad. No, there are good things that come with doing housework. For example, it, you're able to spend more time with your children. So it, it is not necessarily bad. But what we're trying to say here is that, okay, the Philippines is missing out on a lot of things. Women have skills, women have potential, women have knowledge that, can, that they can share. And if around 50% of women are working, so there are 50% who are not contributing to the economy. Um, in fact, the Philippines has the, the among the ASEAN, uh, ASEAN nation, the Philippines is one of the l uh, lowest part, uh, labor force participation rate. And so that is the overarching theme that we're uh, looking at, uh, work and education. Um, so um, uh, the book has five chapters, two chapters in education, and three chapters in work. Uh, in the the Chapter two, the first chapter, um, it takes off from the idea, from the empirical, um, from the stylized facts that I've already mentioned earlier. No, it takes off from the fact that boys are, are underperforming; they are lagging behind in terms of education, uh, and and we have to be, uh, we have to, to look into this. Why? Because we are looking at the gender and development framework, uh, where both men, you know, gender, gender and development is not just about women. It has to be both men and women being able to partake into the, into uh, share into the fruits of development. No, so we we all have to move for, forward, both men and women, both boys and girls. So that is the general idea. No, we are looking into the God framework, and we have to take a look into this uh, education issue. And chapter two essentially is saying that okay. There are many critical factors that that uh, that the government should look into. There are government, uh, the, there, sorry, there are demand side factors, uh, and there are supply side factors. In the demand side, we have um, social expectations, we have norms, we had employment opportunities that the government need to look, look into, and on the supply side. Um, we have to look into the uh, learning environments in school. So, for example, um, our, our, you know, boys might have 
differentiate, you know, the boys might have um, different ways of learning. They have different learning trajectories. And so there must be some sort of, of way such that it, it should be incorporated in the way that learning is done in the classroom. Differentiated learning in a way. Um, uh, for example, the number of, of teachers in, in, the, in, in, the, in schools, it, uh, female teachers versus the number of uh, male teachers, it might or it might not matter, but the, 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 the point that is being driven by, by the, the, this chapter is, has something to do with the fact that we have to look into these issues because these issues might, might, might be, uh, uh, you know, it might mesh together such that it, it creates this problem uh, in terms of uh, boys underperforming in the education front. Uh, and then the second chapter, uh, rather, rather chapter three in the book, is that it, it takes a little bit, you know, different kind of perspective in the sense that it uh, agrees with the fact that um, the, at the aggregate level, it is true that boys are really lagging behind. But if you take a re but if you take a, a regional perspective, there comes there there is a difference in the sense that there are regions that are not really lagging behind. There are regions such as NCR, Calabarzon, and Caraga, where both men and women or boys and girls have comparable um, uh, educational outcomes. And so this chapter of the book uh, identifies regions where educational mobility and human capital accumulation are high and low. And this, this chapter is actually good in providing information in terms of targeting. So for example, if you're interested in uh, looking at best practices, then this chapter can, can tell you which region can you go into so that you can learn more on the best practices in school at home. Okay, so the, the chapter four naman, Essentially, chapters four, uh, chapters four, five, and six has something to do with uh, work, no? And here in chapter four, what they, uh, what they did here is they wanted to estimate uh, women's work. And the work that, 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 that's being referred to here is not just the market work, but it, it's also non-market work. So more work, um, market work, and both non-market work. And this chapter has estimated the value of both work. And it, it, has, sub, it has estimated along the lines of around 12, 12 trillion pes, uh, pesos, right, Mike? Around 12, 12, 12 trillion pesos, both paid and unpaid work. Um, and around 10% of that is contributed by women. So around, um, around 1.1875 trillion pesos uh, uh, is is, is uh, 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 accounted for by the work, housework of women. Um, but more importantly, this chapter um, goes beyond the monetary valuation of paid work and unpaid work. Um, uh, it also provides estimates, no? it also provides evidence in terms of the association of parental time inputs and children's schooling outcome. In particular, it found that um, if Women, or rather, if parents are, are have more inputs in in in, uh, uh, in their home, spending more time with their children, children are are no, are, are are found to have better uh, schooling outcomes, and and in a way, uh, it it uh, is consistent with the findings of other studies where housework is important in nurturing not only the current generations, but also the future generations. So the contribution of women is not necessarily in the market work, but also in non-market work. Because as we have said before, no, um, yun nga, they are nurturing uh, generation across generation by doing this type of, of work. So housework is not necessarily bad. Um, but the uh, next chapter takes on a slightly different perspective. No. It acknowledges it acknowledges the the the, the arguments of the, the other chapter, no, in the sense that it acknowledges that women's contribution is not necessarily in the market work, um, but rather we we wanted what we wanted to do is we wanted at, at in this chapter, no, this chapter provides evidence uh, on the effects of housework on lab, the labor force participation of women. No, and, and, and this is important. I think that for me this is important because it, 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 it is some sort of, um, it provides evidence 
and support to policies that are related with, for example, achieving work-life balance, improving child care services, and anticipating demand for elderly care. And then the last chapter, which is really work, you no know, work in agriculture, um, the to begin with, there are already work-life tensions that's going on between the productive and reproductive roles that are being assumed by women. So am I going to work or, or uh, 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 will I work or will I not work because I have children? And once I decide to go to the marketplace, I, con I am confronted with the problem of pay gap. And, and, and the, the interesting thing here in this chapter is that there, there appears to be glass ceiling, no, even in the agricultural sector. Um, the study uh, found that for exactly the same activity that does not require um, physical strength, there is a pay differential. So even in agricultural sector, the, there is a glass ceiling there, and it's really interesting because there are really there are studies already, uh, and even even aggregate data, no, it will tell us that. The, Philipp the Philippine Filipinas or uh, women have higher higher wages now, but that's at the aggregate. No, it's at the aggregate. If we look at the disaggregated level, that's where the the, the narrative, a, a, nar a different narrative, comes into place. So, so these um, studies, no, uh, in, I, I'm not going to to really really discuss everything because you know <laughs> at least try to read the book, um, but. The, the point is that we're trying to make is that, okay, the ways forward, um, the, the book is actually um, uh, pushing forward for more disaggregated data collection because I think that one of the best way for you to make uh, issues visible is through data. No? Um, and one, one way for us to be able to do more research is to have um, disaggregated uh, data collection. And, 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 and these type of things were already reflected in, in, in the chapters. No? We need disaggregated data in order to, to get a more nuanced analysis, more nuanced understanding. Um, and and uh, at this point, no, at this point, um, we have already, uh, we are looking for at ways forward. We are looking at emerging issues. Uh, and I know for a fact that investing in women are, are doing something on uh, influencing norms and attitudes. Uh, the ILO, for example, is interested in migration. And they're also interested in women in STEM. No, PIDS is... Uh, um, there, there are plans in uh, doing more work on housework and productivity, um, time poverty, and, and in this new uh, work arrangement in dig digital labor platforms. So these are emerging issues that we are currently interested in. Um, and we have invited uh, a good number of speakers who, who can share emerging issues with us. Uh, so that, because I think that this book launch is really a celebration, no? It's a celebration of the, 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 this book, but it's also a coming together of like-minded people. So we are a community of learners uh, and researchers, and we wanted to learn from each other. And so with that, I'm going to stop here uh, so that the speakers can um, share their thoughts on emerging issues. Of course, if they wanted to say something nice about the book, then it's very much welcome as well. Thank you.